Good morning. Happy Thursday, friends. Um, I come to you as a female pastor. Um, my newsfeed, probably not your newsfeed, but my newsfeed is filled today with reactions to the Southern Baptist Convention's vote as of yesterday um, to kick out certain churches or churches, uh, Southern Baptist churches who have female pastors. Um, so this is my reaction to that. I am a woman pastor. I've been a woman pastor for 17 years, 18, seven something. Okay. And, um, I have experienced every year of my life comments about, uh, my calling as a female that preaches the word of God and teaches it to men and women alike. Um, I have dealt with the comments. I have dealt with people standing up and turning their backs and walking out as I preached. I have dealt with comments about my clothes, about my voice, about my message, things that, um, people would never dare say to most men. Um, I've dealt with those things. Here is the temptation, and this is to, this is not, this message is not just to women, okay? This message is to anyone who feels like they have voices in their life that are telling them that they are somehow disqualified from proclaiming the good news of who Jesus is in some form or fashion, okay? This is to you. This is to anybody who feels disqualified of their calling because of their gender, because of a particular sin um, that they have dealt with, um, a particular um, family situation, uh, what they were born into, what they have gone through. Anyone who feels disqualified to proclaim the good news of Jesus, okay, this message is for you. There is a temptation in that to walk around with a chip on your shoulder. There's a temptation when you feel disqualified and you have those voices coming at you. There's this temptation to uh, walk around feeling offended, feeling bitterness, letting this bitterness grow in you. Um, there's a temptation to walk around angry with this, you know, low simmering boil, just waiting for someone to say something um, so that you can react. Okay, there's that temptation. Um, this is my word for you. Do not let that enemy win. Don't let those voices win. There's a woman in John chapter 4 who came to this well in the middle of the day. She was disqualified in her community. Her lifestyle wasn't correct. Her past wasn't correct. Um, she wasn't the right gender to be in spiritual circles, okay? And she is the first person we see in scripture that Jesus himself reveals himself to as the Messiah of the world. And she drops her water jug and she runs into the city of Samaria and she tells anyone that she can find. And you see these, these people, these townspeople, and they come out out of the city to seek out who this man Jesus is. Now, we don't know the backstory of all those people. I have no doubt in the world in which she lived and the world in which we live that there were people, there were men, there were women that judged her message, that turned their back on her message, 
that um, did not come out of the city, or maybe they came out of the city to look for Jesus, to see who this Jesus was, because not because they were excited, but because they were confused, they were curious. We don't know the backstories of all of those people. This is what we know. We know that Jesus revealed himself to her and that he gave her a call to proclaim who he was. And she did it. And people were restored. People were saved that day. People found hope because of her message. So, friends, friends who are feeling disqualified, you are called. You are called by him. Nobody else's voice matters in this, guys. Like, nobody else's voice matters. He has the capital V voice, <laughs> okay? His voice is what calls. So shame on us for judging anyone else's calling. That is not your business, and that is not my business. That is the Lord God's business. And he's doing new things all the time. You know what the Jews were mad about in the New Testament? That suddenly Gentiles were allowed to proclaim. Gentiles were allowed into the community of faith. They were mad about that. People are always going to be mad about something. Okay? Always. Most especially in religious circles. Okay? Even in Christianity. Good gracious. Okay? So you just keep doing what you're doing. You do not lose heart. You do not lose hope. You do not doubt your calling. There's this passage in the very beginning of Philippians where the Apostle Paul is dealing with some, he's heard of these people. It's, this is in Philippians chapter one. He's heard of these people that are um, proclaiming Jesus for their own gain, maybe financial gain, maybe, you know, prestige, maybe status, maybe who knows what, for whatever reason, they're proclaiming the good news of Jesus for bad motives. And this is what Paul says, okay? Take it to heart. I have. Paul says, what does it matter? The gospel of Jesus is being proclaimed and preached. And for that, I rejoice. If anyone is proclaiming the good news of Jesus, I don't care who they are. I don't care what they've done. I don't care what gender they are. I don't care what they have been through. That usually makes their testimony stronger, by the way. Okay, so whatever they have done or are doing or who they are, if they are proclaiming the good news of Jesus, then may we rejoice. May we rejoice. In the kingdom of God, there is neither Jew nor Greek, nor slave nor free, nor male nor female. For we are all one in Christ Jesus. And we are all called to proclaim him. Do not live in bitterness. Do not live in anger. Do not li li live easily offended. You just keep proclaiming. And you let all those voices roll off your back. Put your armor of God on. Okay? Because his armor is a shield about you. And he is a lifter of your head. I love you, friends. Um, I love you. Slated for Grace loves you, which is me. Slated for Grace. Um, and that's it. May we build each other up today. You're awesome. Love you all.